with this yarn formation. So, when we were discussing the nephron and then the structure of the nephron, I mentioned the fact that first of all, this tubular structure is a single cell layer thick. The cellular structure, we have our cuboidal with microvilli, we have cuboidal without it, and then we have our simple squamous. So this would be our structure throughout that tubular system. So in the proximal <laughs> convoluted tubule, uh, tubule, okay, when we were looking at this structure in um, the two types of nephrons, not sure if you guys remember that we have the cortical and the juxtamedullary. In the cortical, we have a close relationship to blood capillaries in the cortical and the juxtamedullary along the loop. We have a close relationship to the capillary, uh, to that bloodstream. Now, note what is trying to be shown here. In my proximal convoluted tube, okay, we have our <coughs> uh, cuboidal with the microvilli. Now, think about this for a second. In this proximal convoluted tubule, it has just left the glomerulus, that glomerular capsule. Lots of water, lots of solute, lots of everything. It is now going to encounter the structure of those cube cells with microvilli. So that means I've got all the little stuff that's doing this number on top of the cell with my fluid passing over them. So try to think about that structure in looking at this picture. Okay, let's try to look at this picture and get an idea of the relationship that we've got. So, over here, tubular fluid. So that means if I'm looking at this and I'm holding this like this, okay, my fluid is moving through this proximal convoluted tubule. And the cells that are making up the tube, these are my cubes with the microvilli. Is everybody with me? So think about looking at your proximal convoluted tubule this way, with fluid moving through, and the cells making it up being my cubes with the microvilli. And then if this is my structure of my tubular system, this is my relationship to a blood vessel surrounding my tube. Yes, no, maybe. Let me see. Okay, slide 11. All right, slide 11. You see the picture of the tube of the, the nephron, the one that's the cortical. Okay, but do you see the close relationship around my glomerulus and that proximal? convoluted tubule, okay, <coughs> see, the, see the blood supply, this is what it's trying to break into for you, wait, it's the eye, I see it, where it is, okay, so I'm trying to show you the relationship between this proximal convoluted tubule and blood vessels, okay, that's what I'm trying to show right here in this picture, 
Now, my tubular fluid has left the capsule. Elvis has left the building. Okay? Anybody in here know Elvis? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, now, if the structure of that proximal convoluted tubule is cuboidal with the um, microvilli, remember that when it's first leaving that glomerular capsule, it's full of stuff. It's full of water. It's full of salt. It's full of the glucose. It's full of all of these things that have filtered out at that level of the glomerulus. Now, we cannot have everything that filtered out go into our urine. We need to return some of that material to our bloodstream. Does that make sense? For example, glucose. I don't want glucose showing up in my urine. I want to return it. I don't want all of my salts, like the sodium, for example, to go into my urine. I need some of that to return to the bloodstream. So here's what's going to happen at the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, now, this is going to be an area for tubular reabsorption. All right. That term confuses me, all right, because it's always backwards to what I think it should be. But what it's telling us, the water and the solute, they got pushed out into the capsule. We need to return them to the blood. So that tells me the body is reabsorbing those materials because we've already absorbed them once from our foodstuffs. Okay? So the way that we can return materials to the blood. We can have the materials that have filtered out, we can have them pass across or through a cell, these cubes, or they can move between the cells. All right? If the materials cross the cell, it is transcellular because they crossed from one side to the other. If they moved between the cells, this would be para, meaning around the cell. Now, here's something that happens at this area. We have what's termed solvent drag. That tells me as the water, because this is very high in water, think about 180 liters, okay? That material that's starting at the PCT, very high in water content, water amount. Now, as water will pass through, quite a few substances like to follow water. So this is solvent drag. Because the water is going to basically drag those materials with it. Sodium chloride, other electrolytes, some of the nitrogen waste, and of course water will move. Now here's what gets to happen. Check this out. In my fluid that's starting to move through the tube, do you guys remember everything that showed up where we had stuff like glucose, sodiums, chlorines, urea, 
magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, all these things are located in the fluid. Well, wait a minute. All these things that are located in the fluid, do I need to be getting rid of those? No. I need to return those to the body. For example, glucosis. Well, I don't want glucose showing up in my urine because that's a sign of diabetes, but also at the same time, I want to return glucose because how do we use glucose in the body? What's a major use of glucose in the body? Huh? We need it for the brain. The brain wants to send it to the body wants to send it to the brain. What other process? Well, what process? Energy. Hmm? Energy. Our energy. It's making the ATP. I don't want to lose that glucose through the urine. Now, what about my sodium? What have we talked about everything in this class? Has there been a single process sodium wasn't involved? I don't think so. Okay. What about something like my calcium? Would I want to lose my calcium through the blood, uh, through the urine? No. What processes in the body that are so important need that calcium? Bones. Well, bones, but Melissa? Muscle. Nerves. Okay? So these are things I need to return. So look at what can happen. I can have materials such as sodium, glucose, um, chlorine, water, look what can happen. They can move through the cell. Some of these will move together. In other words, it would be two substances that would cross that cell, and they would go by way of a SIM port, okay? Sim meaning symbiotic, nice, happy, together, okay? So this could move two of these materials at the same time, all right? Some of the materials are going to be in antiports. As one goes in one direction, another one moves in an opposite direction. For example, Look what can happen with the sodium. The sodium can get ready. It can be moved to go back to the blood. But what happens to my H plus? It goes in the opposite. It goes in the opposite for the body to get rid of it. Because H pluses will affect pH. Okay? Now, when we talk about solvent drag, note that as water passes between the cells, look what it can drag with it. It can drag everything with it through the cell. Now, granted, some of this I do not want getting back into my blood. So, even though something such as urea, which is the nitrogen waste, in my first part of the tube might go back into the bloodstream, when it hits this other portion of the tube, it'll take it back out. All right? So for the most part, in the proximal convoluted tubule, because of everything, that gets to move, especially water. We're going to decrease the amount of the fluid that entered it by roughly 65%. That is going to leave us the remaining amount that we start with, leaving 
that glomerular capsule to concentrate down and turn it into urine. But 35%, 35% is still a lot. If I pass through 180 liters per day and I still have 35%, 35% of 180 is still, somebody do math, okay, I'm not good at math, so, okay, so roughly 60, all right, well, if I had concentrated down the 180 down to 60, what was it, Hop? 63? down to 63, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to go to the bathroom that much. 63 liters still seems like a lot to me to have to go to the bathroom. Just saying, so you know. Only 35